my back has not stopped hurting and it's still in pain. I still have another patch. Here's the thing. The back pain went away a few days ago. Actually, last week the pain went away. I went to go see the doctor last Monday and after like, let's say Wednesday, it was good, you know? And then Sunday night, I'm bent over to go feed the cat and bam, the pain just immediately came back out of nowhere, just from feeding a cat. Yeah, I'm wearing this again. It sucks because I thought I was out of it. But uh, here's the strange part. If I sit down, if I lay down for a long period of time, let's say above five to 10 minutes, above that, it comes back and it's worse. At least it feels worse. I'm not sure if it's actually worse, but it feels painful. So when I'm trying to get up and walking around, it hurts. But if I can walk through the pain and just stay standing up, the pain goes away. Like 90% of the pain right now is just gone. I just acted that part out to show you uh, how much pain I'm in. I guess I did a poor job with that. Somehow just by standing up and walking around moving, it, it's alleviating the pain. But for whatever reason, if I sit down for, like I said, more than five to 10 minutes, I, it, the pain just immediately comes back and it hurts. So I was fine yesterday too. You know, around like seven o'clock, the pain was gone. 90% of it, but you know, when I went to bed, I woke up this morning, I could not get up to pee. So be careful with your back. Make sure that you're training your back. I'm gonna show you what you need, to, what you should be doing to train your back to get stronger and better. And it is gonna be the McGill Big Three. The Big Three exercises, not the squat, not the bench, and not the deadlift, okay? Something else. These exercises are a staple to building a strong core slash lower back. I don't know how exactly how they work, but I know by doing these and the amount of research that I've done so far, these are like these are the exercises that constantly show up. So I need to start doing them daily, and I've already done them like twice today. So I'm gonna do them a third time, and I'm gonna show you what to do. All right, the first exercise that we're gonna do is a curl up, and not your traditional curl ups. All right, we're not going up and down all the way. Ugh. Hopefully, I have enough room on this yoga mat. Okay. So traditionally, you know, we go like this all the way up as far as we can. That's a traditional curl up. That's not what we all want to do, all right? What we want to do is have one leg up, one leg down, all right? We're going to lay flat, and basically you're going to put both your hands underneath. I think it's your lumbar spine, that little part that actually arches, all right? You wanna, we want to feel the lumbar spine not moving. So we don't want to feel anything is what I'm trying to say. Uh, because when we start doing this, our body is going to want to move, right? So we want to prevent it. And that will prevent it, like adjust ourselves so it doesn't happen. All right, so as my hands are down here, I'm going to raise my head up just a few inches. So I'm not doing this because this isn't doing anything. I'm kind of like bringing my shoulders up as well, just a little bit and contracting my abs at the same time. And I'm just gonna hold that for like 10 seconds, bring it down, that's gonna be one rep. Do it again, two reps, three reps, four reps, right? But every single time I'm up, I'm gonna hold it for as long as I can, uh, for about five to 10 seconds, all right? We gradually want to increase the time. And what that is doing is going to target your abs, to really give you more stability and activate them, which is gonna help with the lower back because the lower back is just not the lower back itself, right? The front, like the abs, play a role with the lower back. It's basically, imagine a weightlifting belt, right? It's all one giant belt with multiple different muscles. So you don't want your belt to be loose in one spot, right? So we wanna adjust and train all sides together. And so we're gonna start off with this. Let's go ahead and do a few reps. So squeeze your abs a little bit, raise up. That's one. Now 
Oh, there's two. All right, I'm gonna switch legs. Uh, but you go ahead and keep on going. Keep the same leg for, I don't know, maybe five to 10 reps and then switch over. Uh, I don't think switching legs is gonna do anything, but if it does, I like to do it. Let's go ahead. As you can see, that was a pretty easy exercise. You're definitely gonna feel some burning sensation in your abs and places you never felt before. So basically what that is doing is allowing you to have a grip with your abs, all right, around your whole, your whole body, basically, around your whole like from front and back. And that's a really good thing, because like I said, your abdominals, your, I forget what it's called exactly, but it's, like I said, imagine like a belt around you, like a weightlifting belt that you normally put on, powerlifters, you know, you see them all the time. That's gonna help with that. You know, it's a second belt. Now the next exercise is one that I really don't like, but the third one is something that I do like a lot, but at the same time, it's very taxing. So um, make sure you plan these exercises accordingly. Uh, wherever your weakest area is, make sure you do that first. And by weakest area, the one that's gonna exhaust you the most, do that first. And then as it gets easier, the exercise that's easiest should be the last. At least that's my opinion. So with this next exercise, we're gonna be doing what is called a bird dog. I'm sure you've heard about it before. Basically, you're gonna be on all fours, right? And you're gonna alternate between your right arm and your left leg, and you're gonna stretch out. Hold for a couple seconds, and then back to resting, and then do it again, right? So basically, like, I'm like this, I'm gonna go like that. You're gonna see, you're gonna watch. And you're gonna be alternating, not all at once, but you're gonna hold the arm and the leg that's up in the air for about another five to 10 seconds. You wanna gradually build that up as much as you can, two, 10 seconds. And again, we're gonna do roughly five to 10 reps as many times as possible throughout the day, right? We don't wanna exhaust ourselves all at once, but we wanna do enough throughout the day that we seek progress, okay? So let me go ahead and set up for that. You know, I may not be in the best spot for this, but uh, it is what it is, all right? So the first thing that we wanna do is pick an arm and pick a leg. So it's gonna be the alternating leg, right? So I'm gonna do my right arm and my left leg. So I'm gonna raise this one up, push my left leg back. I'm trying not to touch the couch and just kind of hold my position for about 10 seconds. Bring it in, that would definitely was intent, but demonstration purposes, just kind of hold and push your heel out. Basically what this is doing is keeping your spine in alignment and working out stabilizer muscles around your, your core to make sure that they're strong enough for that belt clip, whatever it's called. So we're gonna pretend I did quite a few reps and we're gonna go back down, press a little bit and switch so now, left leg, right arm. I think this is the one that I'm weak on. This side. And definitely be squeezing your abs, your obliques, whatever you can to stay neutral. So basically, if somebody were, were to put a cup on my back, it will not spill over because my back is basically like this table right here. It's flat, you know, you probably can't see it, but we want to keep it stable enough that it is just flat. We'll rest again and then go to the other side. Now see, this one's easy. All right, I'm gonna switch around. Legs again. I want to keep this motion nice and controlled. And as I get my leg and my hand close enough, I almost want them to be touching together. They don't have to touch, but they want to get them close as possible. And that's exercise number two. Exercise number three, that's going to be the hardest one, the most taxing, but also the most rewarding because it's targeting a lot of my personal weak areas. 
you might think the complete opposite, but that's definitely going to be it. We're going to start on my bad side. So basically what we're going to be doing is a side plank. Okay. And not your traditional side plank. Like, you know, you stand up on your side. Uh, the difference on this side plank is we're going to get the gluteus maximus medium. One of the, we're going to get your butt involved was what I'm, what I'm trying to say with this alternative and slightly better version. So I sit down a lot for my work, uh, at least a lot more than I ever used to for any other job, which means my butt, my hips, they are on a different rotation than they should be. They're not in a natural state. So uh, my muscles are lengthened, some of them are shortened. So to get that back, uh, one of these exercises is definitely gonna help out, especially with my lower back pain, uh, because I'm pretty sure this is stemming from something being shortened or lengthened and it just whatever. Anyways, get on a position like this. So you wanna have your knees out, but yet your toes kind of inward, right? You wanna be on one arm and just like a normal side plank, you're gonna go on your side and do this, all right? This is gonna be your ending position. You're gonna dip back and this is gonna be your starting position. So your hips and your knees are not at the same spot when you start. Your hips are further back like if you were doing a squat, you know, your knees are forward. But when you go up, you want to squeeze your butt and bring it close to the wall or whatever's in front of you. So I'm going to go out and then go in, hold it. Again, we're holding this for five seconds or maybe 10 seconds, however long you can. And you want to squeeze your butt, all right? And that's also going to work out your obliques on this side as well. And by working out your, your butt, it's going to make that stronger in either, any muscles that are weak. I'm pretty sure my muscles are weak because I sit down all day. A lot of my glutes muscles, like the, the muscles in there, they're, they're lengthened, which means they're too long. They're not in their natural state. So i got to shorten them by activating them. So here we go. All right, you want to squeeze as hard as you can. Man, this hurts. Oh, fuck. Oh, I think doing all that talking at first made me weak, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the other side. Ugh. Hopefully I don't hit myself on that. All right, get back into position. Here we go. Squeeze like a motherfucker. Again. Okay, now you, you get the gist. Those three exercises are definitely gonna help out in the long run, especially if you do them every day. I need to, do, need to start doing them every day. I've been planning on doing them every day, but anytime my back gets better, something happens and it starts to hurt again. So hopefully my back does not start hurting again tomorrow. Hopefully I'm good. Hopefully I'm out of the woods because this Friday in two days, my buddy is proposing to his girlfriend and he asked me to take pictures and it, it's two days away. I cannot find another photographer, even if I wanted to, uh, I'm, I'm sure I could, but I, I honestly, I want to be there for him for this moment for proposing to his girlfriend. So I don't really want to find somebody else to take pictures. I want to be the one who takes the pictures. Um, so I don't want to let them down. So hopefully I'm out of the woods with my back pain because if it hurts, I won't be able to fucking go. And sure, I said that as long as I stand up all day and walk, kind of get moved around, the pain should go away. At least that's what happened. That's what I've noticed the last two days. Uh, but I don't think that's how it works on the first day when the pain starts to come back because that's, that's the strongest point. So... All right, those are the three big exercises that you should do that I'm gonna do. Along with that, here's a couple bonus exercises that I like to do. One of them is stretching out your hips. So you're gonna be like in a swastika. I don't like seeing that word, but 
position, you know, half, you know, you got your, your lead, both your legs are at 90 degrees. One in the back, one in the front, and basically you're just gonna bend forward and really stretch out anything that is tight in your butt. Whew, yeah. And you don't wanna go like this. You wanna keep it back straight and just kind of lean forward slowly. And you're definitely gonna feel a stretch. Some of you might feel it sooner than others. You know, being in this position, you might feel it. So just kind of go nice and slow, kind of hold it at the point where you can't go any lower. Don't force it, kind of go back up and then go back down and see if you're able to go just a little bit lower than before. But again, do not force going too low too fast, all right? That's not gonna help. Just a slow, moderate amount. Oh yeah, that feels good. That's a good stretch. Took me a couple seconds, but oh yeah, here we go. Relax. All right, let's switch legs. Oh, my back. Oh, that feels so good. All right, here we go. So we know this is the side that hurts the most for me. When I'm doing this stretch, I don't really feel it. I don't feel anything like I do with the other one. So my cause of a back injury might be on my right side, even though I'm feeling it on my left side. And that's just the strange part about the human body is where you feel, where, yeah, where you feel the pain, it's not where the pain actually occurs. So like I'm, I'm really far down deep, probably deeper than I was on the other side. And I don't feel a stretch. No stretch. Strange. All right, so let me go back on this side and try it again. Yep, there's already a stretch right there. Oh my God. So, be mindful, be careful with these exercises. Do not overdo it. Uh, do a moderate amount, you know, and then try to do as many throughout the day as you can. Maybe space them out. Oh yeah, oh man, this is good. Oh. Who knew stretching was gonna be so good, man? It's painful, but it's both good. I'm crapping up right here. Ooh, ooh, that's not a good feeling. All right, let me switch over again, see if I did something wrong. Maybe I didn't set myself up correctly. I definitely feel some discomfort in my lower back on this side. That might be it, but as far as a stretch, I'm not really feeling a stretch. So that was a very quick vlog tutorial on how to help your lower back. Definitely go see a uh, physician, uh, physical therapist, whoever is actually qualified for this. I plan on going to go see uh, Squat University, Dr. Uh, his name's like some thing that I cannot pronounce it. And I'll, honestly, I don't remember right now, but um, Squat University is where I learned a lot of these exercises from, especially from TikTok. I follow him, his account. So anytime he pulls up a video, I'm watching it and I'm trying to do those exercises. Now with these exercises, like I said before, you need to make sure you need to make sure that you're doing them every single day as much as you can. Maybe give yourself a day in between of rest, but the more you do it, better you're gonna get at it, and the more progress you're gonna see along that. These are still muscles that we are training, all right? That means they are being broken down, which means you need to consume enough protein throughout your day to make sure that these muscles are growing back at 100% and stronger than they, have, than they were. If you're not consuming the right amount of protein 
sure you'll still see progress but you can see progress a lot faster a lot sooner and a lot better if you consume the right amount of protein so whatever your protein sources are make sure you're getting more than enough of it okay man that was a, that was a that was a handful of things to say man all right we we'll finish this video edit it upload it and then i'm probably going to do more exercises because i definitely need it and i haven't been to the gym in a few days and the thing that sucks about all these exercises is none of these have been caused from actually exercising i might have made them worse from exercising thinking all right this could help out but nothing i've never felt the pain from doing an exercise at the gym never all right not the first time this happened to me last year and not the second time that happened a month ago and definitely not the third time that just happened last week thanks for watching make sure you like the channel like the video comment down below any exercises that you think i should do for my lower back if you think of any but hey these should be a good starting point okay starting point for you to get better